Hey there everybody, I'm Chili and welcome back to tutorial 2 of Beginner C++. Today we're going to be looking at variables and operations, which is just a bullshit word that means adding and subtracting and such. First though, let's take a look at the homework. I hope you were able to solve the little problem I gave you. Let's go uh, into game.cpp and your code should look something like this. If you build it, you're going to get your reticle in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. And this was achieved quite simply by applying the same operation to each X and each Y coordinate. So in my case, I added 300 to every X and 200 to every Y. And by doing the same thing to each pixel, the pixels don't move relative to each other, but they're all gonna move as a group on the screen. Now this is called a uh, translation which is just a kind of sliding around on the screen. And it's a kind of transformation, which is confusing that those two words sound so similar, but uh, yeah, translation is a kind of transformation. Other transformations include scaling and rotation. And the reason I'm talking about this bullshit is because transformations become really important, especially in uh, 3D graphics. You're gonna be transforming vertices and that will uh, move your meshes around on the screen. But uh, that's another story. We won't, we won't be going there today for sure. One of the things I wanted you to gain by doing the homework is I wanted you to gain the feel of, man, this is a pain in the ass changing all these numbers one by one. And just imagine if it were like a, you know, a normal size sprite with hundreds or thousands of pixels. And now you gotta change all those pixel values, all those coordinates. Ain't nobody getting time, ain't nobody getting time, ain't nobody getting time for that. You know, there must be an easier way, and there is, and that's gonna be the goal of today's lesson. I'm gonna teach you the tools you need to do the easier thing, to be lazy. That's, that's really our goal in programming, is just how lazy can we be? But yeah, if you manage to solve that all on your own, then congratulations, you're now a transformer. I guess that means you can hang out with Shia LaBeouf now? I don't know. Now before we move on to variables, there is uh, one little thing I want to do. These lines here, these put pixel lines, they are going to get in my way. So I want to get rid of them. Now I could just delete them, but I'm going to need them later on. I'm going to want them back at some point. So what I'm going to do instead is comment these little fuckers out. Now what the fuck does that mean? When you comment something out, what you're doing is you're making it invisible to the compiler. It's some invisible man shit going on here. This allows you to, you know, write any kind of bullshit you want. For example, you could write something like this, and when you try to compile it, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get your shit pushed in by the compiler. It's going to smack your trash-talking ass into the ground. So that's not the way you got to do it. What you got to do... When you want to smack talk the compiler, you got to do it on the down low. You got to make it invisible to the compiler. And then you can talk all the trash you want and the compiler don't know shit. Now boring people are going to tell you you should be using comments to, you know, explain what you're doing in your code in plain English so that other people can understand it or that even you can understand it later on when you come back to it after like six months. But you know what, fuck them. Because what I say is you should write the most complicated code you can imagine and when you're done, you just write a single comment that's like, sorry, winky face. Just like, yeah, just a big fuck you to future Chili or whoever's writing that code or whoever's trying to read it. Just fuck them all. I'm joking, of course. You know, comments are important and all that bullshit. But seriously, though, this is what a comment is. You put these two slashes in front of a line and it makes that line invisible to the compiler, starting from the slashes. Now that we've done that, let's, uh, let's create a variable. That is the supposed theme of this video. So I'm gonna do it. I type in int and x and semicolon and you're done. You've made your first freaking variable. So the question arises, what the fuck is a variable, Chili? Well, a variable is just a box. It's a box and you can put numbers inside it. Well, I mean, you can put a bunch of different things. It depends on the type of variable. But uh, in our case here, this is an int, and you put numbers. Specifically, you put numbers like, like say, 420 or 69 
or zero or even like negative 1337 all those good numbers you put them those kind of numbers in this kind of box you don't ever put like uh, you know 14.1 no decimals no fractions just your standard numbers the range goes from about minus 2 billion to plus 2 billion so you can put some pretty big numbers in this particular box so yeah it's a box you put numbers in it the way you do it when you want to declare a variable you write the type of the variable and then you write the name you want to give it so this variable is of type int and its name is x so great you got this variable what exactly does that give you well if you build it what you get here is you see the compiler says warning x is an unreferenced local variable so sure you made a variable you told the compiler hey you know make this box for me i'm going to put some stuff in it and the, the compiler's like okay dude i'll make that box for you and then you don't ever put anything in the box and the compiler's like you know hey dude remember that box you told me to make yeah uh, what did you ever do with that? Oh, I, I didn't do anything. And the compiler's like, well, shit, dude. I mean, it's, it's okay, I guess, but if you're not going to use the box, like, don't tell me to make the box. It's kind of dumb. So, yeah, this is not going to do anything. And if you run it exactly... Jack and shit. And Jack left town. So what we need to do is we need to use this variable in some kind of meaningful way. So what I'm going to do is I am going to use the value of the variable x in our put pixel call because as you may have remembered if we look at the hint here put pixel takes an int our variable is an int so this should go over super good no problems whatsoever this is going to be awesome we'll run that and crash oh shit what did we do well here's the thing you make a variable it's kind of like buying a like a cup at the store, right? You come home with that cup. What are you going to do with that cup? What's the first thing you're going to do? Are you going to pour some like Pepsi Max in there and just guzzle that shit? Or are you going to wash that fucking cup? You're going to wash it first, right? We're not barbarians. We wash that shit for you. You don't know who's been touching that. You might have had like some dick toucher putting his fingers all up in that cup. You don't want that shit. So when you buy a cup at the store, you wash that shit first. When you create a variable, you gotta set it to some kind of known value. You can't just create it and then expect it. You don't know what's in the box. Oh, what's in the box? Not till you give me the what's gun. in the fucking box? You gotta, you gotta say what's in the box. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna assign a value to this variable. This is called this equal sign here is called the assignment operator, and it sets the values of shit. So we're gonna set this one to I don't know like twenty. All right. So now we set x to 20. Now it is a known value. It does no longer have the germs of the dick toucher on it. And when you build that, you know, run it. And here we go. Our pixel, you see there, the x value has moved over to somewhere that looks like it's about 20. I would say, I would buy that. Seems totally legit. So what's happening here is we create a little box to store a number. Then we store the number 20 in here. And then in this line, what we're doing is first we're going to look in the box and we're going to get the number in there, and that's 20. And then we're going to use that with these other literal numbers to call put pixel. Now we can get a little fancy with this here. Uh, you see here where we uh, declare the variable and then here we assign the value 20. We can do that all in one step. I mean, in the end, the actual machine instructions generated won't be any different but it looks a little nicer this way i think i prefer to do it all in the same line so here we declare x and then we set its value to 20 and you build that you run it it's going to do the same thing i'm not even going to bother i'm not going to waste your time that's good now the other thing that i like to do and this is a smart thing to do is you can specify that the value x doesn't change after it's been created and that's, that's a good idea to do, because we're not changing x. So we want to prevent ourselves from accidentally doing something that changes x. We put a const in front of this int here, and that means that x ain't going to be changing. So if we try to do something like this, x is equal to 5, what happens is you're going to get an error. Constant x expression must be modifiable. You can't change x, because we specified it as being constant. 
So I like this and I'm going to use it fairly often. It's called const correctness. And uh, I will guide you in the ways of const correctness, but it's not that important. Now, you may come under the misapprehension that uh, the name matters for the variable. Name does not matter. Like, for example, you see here, the parameter here, the hint here for put pixel says int x. So you might say, well, I guess that means I got to make the variable name x if I want to use it in here. But nope, you don't have to do that. You can name it whatever the fuck you want. I'm going to name mine pubes. Yeah, pubes. That's right. You heard me. And uh, I'm going to build that. The compiler doesn't seem to have any problems with it. Let's see if it works the same as the other one. Yeah, it works perfectly fine. That's good. Pubes is a perfectly good name for a variable. Now, there are rules for naming variables. You can't just name it any old thing you want. You can't name it, for example, hashtag pubes or uh, pubes with a dollar sign. That's not, that's not kosher. There are, basically, you can use any letter capital or uh, lowercase, you can use any number, and you can use the underscore, like that. Pube underscore s, perfectly fine. Uh, only The only caveat there, the only exception, is you can't start your name with a number. That's no good. It's got to start with a letter or a uh, underscore. It can start with an underscore, that's fine. You can, it can start with like, you can start yours with like 50 underscores and that would probably still be fine. Uh, but that's stupid. And like I said before, case matters. So you, if you declare it as pubes with a uh, small b and you write it out as pubes with a big b, you're gonna get a problem because it says that's undefined. This thing ain't the same as this. And one more thing, although it might be obvious, you can't use the same name twice because that's just that's just retarded. You're going to get a problem. It doesn't actually underline it here. Now I'm wondering if I'm just talking out of my ass. No, yeah, there we go. Redefinition, multiple initialization. There you go. So you're not allowed to use the same name twice, obviously. But other than that, yeah, I, uh, a rose by any other name would smell just as sweet. Unless it were called stench blossoms. Or crap weed. Anyways, you probably shouldn't name your variables things like pubes or dick or whatever because that doesn't really doesn't really mean anything in the context of the code does it what you want to strive for is variable names that you can look at it and just say oh i know what that thing is that's the x coordinate or uh, that's the ship object and uh, you want to strive for code that is uh, they say self-commenting without even adding, you know, English sentences to describe what you're doing, just by looking at the code itself, a programmer can understand what you're thinking. That's the, that's the goal. And naming your variables pubes probably isn't going to further that goal. But, I don't know, it might be fun. Alright, so let's use the variable x for every x coordinate here now. So we're just going to replace all of these guys with x's. And we're going to build that. Alright, here we go. There we go. So it moved to the left, moved over here. And the beauty of this is, of course, now, by changing just one number here, chance to change this one to 250. And we'll just run that from there. Yeah, we want to build. See, now we can move the whole thing around just by changing one freaking number. That's like motherfucking lever mechanical advantage bullshit going on there. It's good shit. All right. So... This variable bullshit here, this is one piece of the puzzle in our quest to be lazy bastards. Now I'm going to give you another piece of the puzzle. So what we can do is we can do some mathematical operations. We can add shit together. Let's add something. Let's add mm, 400 to x. So we're going to do x plus 400. What do you expect to happen here? Well, shit. Our, uh, our thing didn't move at all. Maybe you were expecting it to go over here, but not, that's not how it works. That is not how it works, because the way that the addition operator works is it doesn't add this number to this variable. That's not, how, that's not what's going on. What's going on is the addition operator, it is going to... Well, first, this, first thing that's going to happen when you evaluate this expression here is it's going to load the value stored in x. So it's going to load 250. So x is going to, we'll just replace this. Ah, oh, fuck, my eraser is so fucking tiny. That's what she said. Wait, it doesn't make sense. All right. 
We're going to load the value of x, 250. Then what we're going to do, this, this operator is going to consume the value on the left and the value on the right. It's going to go nom nom nom. And it's going to add them together and it is going to excrete the result. So it's going to excrete the result of 650. So this operation of x plus 400 is going to resolve to basically a statement like this. 650 that's just that's the whole statement and you can you can make that statement in C++ I mean, it's it's perfectly valid. I'll, I'll do it right now. Look here 650 that's it don't, don't like call a function don't do store of make a calculation just 650 That's the statement That's the joke You suck, McBain! <laughs> And it compiles but it don't do shit so what you want to do is you want to take that result and you want to, you know, do something with it. So, for example, we could do const uh, int result is equal to x plus, fuck, plus 400. So what this statement does is first it loads the value of x and then it finds the sum of that value plus 400 and then it stores the result in the variable called result and that works fine now another thing you can do is you can say put an addition operator in here and what this is going to do is it's going to load the value of x add that with 400 and then use that to call put pixel so if we do that we see that this pixel is now moved over to the right and the same goes for subtraction you can subtract and i'm just going to lower the value here so you don't go off the end of the screen but it's the same difference, right? It's going to move like that. So there you have it. Operators and variables. Two great tastes that taste great together. Now I've got another challenge for you for the homework. What I want you guys to do is rewrite the code for drawing the reticle. And what you're going to do is you're going to make it so that just by changing two values, you can position the reticle anywhere on the screen in the x and y directions. So you're going to use variables and you're going to use operators and you use those things together and you're going to make sweet, sweet love. This challenge is actually a little more complicated than the one I gave in the original series, but I think you guys are up to it. So give it your best shot. And you know what? Don't worry if you can't figure it out, and especially if this is your first programming language. If this is your first Rodeo, then, uh, you know, don't sweat it, but give it, give it a good try before you move on to the next lesson and see the answer. Remember, you're a transformer. You can do it. Do it! Just do it! And that'll about do it for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, click the like button. I'd like to thank you guys for the amazing support you showed, and I will see you soon with some more C++.